Hello, my name is Alex Maud Daniels, and I started as the Nature Recovery Officer for the Suffolk Coast and Heaths and Dedham Vale AOMBs at the beginning of June last year. And I'm pleased to have been given the opportunity to give you an update on nature recovery in the Suffolk Coast and Heaths AOMB. To begin, I'm going to give some context and a small reminder as to how the Nature Recovery Plan fits within the broader Nature Recovery National Picture. The establishment of a National Nature Recovery Network is an integral part of the government's 25-year environment plan, and they have set four key nature recovery objectives within it to be achieved by 2042. These targets include the restoration of 75% of protected sites on land to favourable condition, the creation or restoration of 500,000 hectares of additional wildlife rich habitat outside protected sites, the recovery of threatened and iconic animal and plant species by providing more diverse and better connected habitats, and finally a target to increase woodland cover. Although the conservation of wildlife has always been part of the AOMB's remit to conserve and enhance natural beauty, the Glover Review has strengthened the emphasis AOMB's place upon wildlife conservation and nature recovery has become more central to the purposes of designated landscapes. And we welcome this as long as we are sufficiently resourced to carry out nature recovery efficiently. So in response to the Glover Review and the Environment Plan, the 36 AOMBs in England and Wales made a long-term commitment to nature recovery through the Colchester Declaration in 2019. Included within the declaration targets in the short term are for each AOMB to produce a nature recovery plan, which is almost finished for the Suffolk Coast and Heath AOMB, but also some more some ambitious longer term targets to aim for by 2030. And you will see how they align with the targets in the 25 year environment plan. The targets include getting 200,000 hectares of triple SIs in AOMBs into favourable condition, the creation and restoration of 100,000 hectares of wildlife rich habitat outside of protected sites in AOMBs, the creation of 36,000 hectares of new woodland will have been planted or allowed to regenerate in AOMBs, and lastly to improve the conservation status of at least 30 species relevant to AOMBs. Thank you to all our partners that were able to fill out the Nature Recovery Plan survey back in September. We have carefully considered the responses we've had and are building them into the Nature Recovery Plan where appropriate. We had a good level of positive feedback on our seven proposed Nature Recovery core zones, so we intend to stick with them in the plan. These core zones are the largest connected expanses of wildlife rich sites in the Suffolk Coast and Heath AOMB. A sizeable proportion of them are protected and designated sites, but they are also made up of non-designated wildlife rich areas as well. It is our ambition to form working groups for all of these core zones where partners, landowners and local people who manage and own the land within them will be invited to explore nature recovery opportunities. But very importantly, landowners owning land connected to these core zones, i.e. land currently outside, will also be invited to explore opportunities for habitat creation with the aim of expanding the size of these nature recovery core zones, along with opportunities for connectivity, i.e. connecting wildlife rich sites within the core zones to the wider environment outside. We envisage that the role of the AOMB will differ in each of the nature recovery core zones. In core zones B and C, for example, where a high percentage of the land is already reserves and triple SIs, it's expected that the role of the AOMB will be less active as the land is already in great hands being managed by the experts such as the RSPB, Suffolk Wildlife Trust and the National Trust, etc. The AOMB has no intention of interfering with any of the brilliant conservation work that goes on in these areas. However, could the AOMB, for example, help to engage landowners in the surrounding landscape to help make the core zones bigger and better connected, and the AOMB can take a more leading role in, in some of the other core zones to help set up partnerships, engage with landowners and facilitate conservation work. I've picked one of our core zones just as, as an example to show, to show you, which is core zone G. This is the largest identified nature recovery core zone within the plan. 
It includes the store and oral estuaries and surrounding areas, including habitats within the AOMB extension area. One of the things I've been working on whilst writing the plan is looking at the potential for habitat creation and restoration within and connected to each of the core zones. So to do this, I've used the national habitat network maps, which have been produced by Natural England recently, to assist in the creation of a national nature recovery network. So using core zone G as an example, I've been able to calculate the overall size of the existing priority habitats in addition to establishing the potential for habitat creation and restoration for these habitats. So if you take reed beds, just as an example, there are currently 55.96 hectares in core zone G. There is, however, the potential to restore 523 hectares of reed beds. There are 194 hectares of reed bed that fall within the fragmentation action zone and 1,151 hectares within network enhancement zone one, which is likely to be suitable for reed bed creation. So just to explain a little bit about what that means, the brown sections on the map show the primary habitat, i.e. the existing reed bed habitat, which I know you can't see very well on this slide, so I apologize for that. The dark green sections on the map show where the potential is to restore reed bed habitat. So these are areas of land which are predominantly composed of existing semi-natural habitat where reed bed is present in a degraded or fragmented form and which are likely to be suitable for restoration. The pink areas you can see are known as network enhancement zone one and these areas contain land connecting existing patches of reed bed habitat and its associated habitats which are likely to be suitable for the creation of new reed bed habitat. And lastly, the light green areas on the map is the, is the fragmentation action zone for reed beds. And that is the land within network enhancement zone one that connects existing patches of reed bed and associated habitats, which are currently highly fragmented and where fragmentation could be reduced by habitat creation. Although we will be including some species recovery projects in the nature recovery plan, we will be mainly focusing on landscape scale projects, habitat creation and enhancement, which will be to the benefit of a multitude of different species throughout the AOMB. Within the nature recovery plan, we are prioritizing 10 habitats within the AOMB. But this does not mean that habitats not listed here will be ignored. We have adopted a tiered approach with seven habitats being identified as highest priority in tier one and three other habitats with a slightly lower level of priority in tier two. There are a number of different reasons as to why we have selected these 10 habitats, which I don't have time to discuss in this presentation. The flagship species to represent the Coast and Heath AOMB has been selected, the red shank, Back in September last year, we facilitated a Zoom debate where we invited our environmental partners with an interest in the AOMB's wildlife to pitch for a species, contribute to a debate and then cast votes at the end. Although we had some fantastic pitches for other species, the red shank was the worthy winner in the end. It was selected for a variety of different reasons, which again, I'm afraid I don't have time to discuss in this presentation. Similarly to habitats, we have adopted a tiered approach to priority species. We have selected nine species in addition to red shank for tier one and are made up of seven other species that were pitched for by environmental partners at the flagship species Zoom debate. There were many good arguments for why they should be prioritized, so we felt it made a lot of sense to prioritize them within the nature recovery plan. Two other species were added to tier one, brown hare and large garden bumblebee, because they received the highest number of votes in the nature recovery plan survey. Tier two species are made up of species that met the necessary criteria and received the most votes after brown hare and large garden bumblebee in the nature recovery plan survey. One of our nature recovery aspirations that we asked for feedback on in the nature recovery plan consultation was over the formation of a nature recovery urban area and our top choice was Ipswich. This was well received and so we felt it made sense to try and join the existing Wild Ipswich partnership to see if we can help meet some of the objectives of the network. 
Another popular nature recovery aspiration was for the AOMB to work in partnership with the Broads Authority to try and bridge the gap between the Norfolk Broads and the northern tip of the AOMB by improving connectivity and working collaboratively on nature recovery initiatives. We have an initial scoping meeting to discuss options with the Broads Authority and Natural England on April the 7th. Let's not forget that nature is in a very precarious position at this point in time and it needs all our collective efforts to restore its fortunes. So we are particularly keen on delivering projects today and not always tomorrow. So here is a, an update on some of the projects that we've been working on so far. We have received some funding from Natural England to carry out a Red Shank awareness campaign and we have made some good progress on this and thanks to partners who have helped with this project so far. We have produced a Red Shank awareness postcard that will assist us with the awareness raising work. We have trained up 25 volunteers to assist with various activities, including putting up signs on footpath posts in appropriate places to carry out Red Shank counts and conduct surveys and carry out visitor engagement work. Volunteers will also be helping to carry out bird surveys in Shotley and to educate the public about birds that are present on the Shingle Beach and along the estuary, with the long-term aim of increasing visitor enjoyment of the area and to reduce disturbance to key species of birds such as red shank, brent geese and curlew. We have also teamed up with SOS Swifts, who are in the process of locating 80 AOMB funded Swift boxes and 13 callers in various locations throughout the AOMB. I have very recently submitted a bid to the Galloper Wind Farm Fund to carry out a Laced and Love Swift project, which will involve installation of more Swift boxes and callers alongside Swift awareness raising activities to be carried out within a five kilometre radius of Sizewell. And finally, the Shotley Gate Community Orchard project, which is part funded through the AOMB SDF fund, is making good progress. All the orchard trees have been planted, a new native hedge has also been planted, and now the group is starting on the ground preparation and seed sowing to help establish a wildflower meadow. Many thanks for listening. <laughs>